geoarchaeology is an approach that uses a suite of earth science techniques to understand the archaeological record. Questions such as, how are archaeological sites formed? Where did the artefacts, plant and mineral materials come from and how did they get there? How were different areas of an archaeological site used? How was a wider landscape around the site used for agriculture and collecting resources? What role do geomorphological processes play in choosing the location for an archaeological site and how do they influence its abandonment? We use geoarchaeological methods in the Landscapes of Reconquest project to identify what was grown on terraces and irrigation systems, how they were managed and subsequently abandoned. These methods also help us to understand how different areas of castles were used and how the activities changed over time. Soil micromorphology is a geoarchaeological technique that enables us to essentially conduct an excavation under the microscope to unlock the stories within the soils. Here at Tabor Castle in Andalusia, we're collecting samples from floor layers within a building dating to the Nazarid period. The information from the samples will tell us about the materials, such as plaster, that were used to construct the floor, and from the microscopic residues, what activities took place here. The sample, which consists of a small block, is cut out of the profile of sediments. These sediments represent layers of materials that have built up inside this area. The layers can represent floor surfaces, accumulations of residues from various activities, and collapsed building materials from periods of abandonment. It is important to keep the block intact. It is tightly wrapped and labelled with its location and orientation. The block is then taken back to the lab to prepare what is known as a thin section. We are effectively taking an intact part of the archaeological site back to the lab to study under the microscope. The samples are oven dried to remove all moisture, then placed under vacuum to remove the air. Resin is dripped into the sample while it is under vacuum, so it infills the void spaces or air pockets between the particles. When the samples are covered with resin, they are placed in an oven overnight to harden, to form a solid block. The foil is removed and the block is then cut using rock cutting saws. Firstly, a slab is cut from the block, which is one centimetre thick. Next, the slab is trimmed to size so that it fits onto a glass slide, which is 10.5 by 7.5 centimetres. A bit more resin is added to the surface of the slab to infill any small areas where the resin didn't reach. The next day, once the resin has cured, a grinding machine called the bro is used to flatten the surface. The slabs are held in holders on the back plate and the wheel grinds their surface as the back plate turns. The surface of the glass slides is also flattened using a precision lapping machine called the Logitech. The slabs will be bonded to the glass slides, so it is important that both are as flat as possible to give a good finish. 
The jigs are calibrated to 2.7 millimetres. The slides are held onto the jigs by a vacuum. The slides are lapped in a solution made up of water and aluminium oxide. The particles of aluminium oxide are suspended in the water to act as an abrasive. The slabs are bonded to the glass slides using resin. They are left in a mounting jig overnight so that the resin can set. When the resin has set, the excess slab is cut off to leave a section that is 3 mm in thickness. The Bro grinding machine is used again to grind the section down to a thickness of 100 microns. They are then transferred to the Logitech, where the sections are lapped to a thickness of 30 microns. This time in an abrasive solution made up of oil and aluminium oxide to protect the samples. The final product is called a thin section. The thin sections are then cover slipped, ready for analysis. The thin sections are examined using a polarizing microscope under a range of magnifications from around times 25 to times 630. The archaeological layers within the thin section are described and classified using criteria from soil science and sedimentology. The inclusions, such as minerals, plant materials and fragments of dung and pottery, are quantified. In these thin sections from Kartama near Malaga, the organic material is exceptionally well preserved. Here you can see articulated dendritic phytoliths from cereals, some of which are burnt and slightly melted in appearance. Phytoliths are plant microfossils formed from biogenic silica. If you look closely, you can see all the phytoliths joined together like a jigsaw. Here you can see herbivore dung, which contains calcareous faecal spherulites. These are tiny microparticles that form in the guts of certain herbivores, such as sheep and goats. The information from Kartama helps us to understand the economy of a site in terms of its food processing and animal husbandry, and the nature of the occupation below the castle.